Hello, I'm Ron Lamping, a consultant with RCL Benziger. We're here to kind of give some thoughts and some ideas if you're called to help teach your children at home. The title of this was called, What, Me Be a Teacher? Well, let's just kind of look at that and see what that's all about. During the past few months, many things have changed in our daily lives. We're called to do things in a different way, things that we don't normally do and things that we have probably never done before. Truly, necessity is the mother of invention. And those words are very, very true right now. New words came into our life this spring. New words such as distant learning and blended learning. Somehow we made it through that, thinking that this too would pay us by the time we return to school in the fall. Well, not so. Parents are now called to help teach their children again at home. And so quite often we ask that question, what, me, be a teacher? Well, the answer is very clearly yes. Yes, you can do it. Remember that from little on, you were teaching your children and you continue to bring them up in the ways, in the ways of how your family does things and in traditions that we have both in our family and just in the way we live in our communities. Most importantly, remember too at your child's baptism that you promised to make it your constant care to bring him or her up in the practice of the faith. The celebrant said that the parents would be the first teachers of their children in the ways of faith. Well, yes, that may seem like a very daunting task, but God fills you with the grace to be able to do that. This is your role of parents. This is what being a parent is all about. And yes, you really can do it. So we're going to look very quickly at seven things, seven things that will help you to teach your children religion right there in your own homes. So number one, you might ask the simple question, what am I doing as a catechist? You might have heard that term catechist before and you said, wait, how can I be a catechist? I'm not really trained. Well, remember, catechist comes from a Greek word, a Greek word that means to echo. And that's what you're doing. You're echoing your faith. The early Christians learned all about the Catholic Church, all about being a Catholic by being mentored by another Christian. And that's what you're doing. You are being an example of the faith to your child. You are telling them the stories, the stories of how you lived your faith. You are telling them about the truths of the faith and how those truths of the faith have come alive in your life. You're telling them the stories of how you celebrate faith in your life, how prayer has become a part of your life, how you celebrate the feasts of the church, the big feasts like Christmas, Easter, and other ones. Are there any special feasts of the church that you celebrate in your family all the time? Quite often those center around ethnic celebrations, the blessing of the Easter basket, the feast of the fish on Christmas Eve, our Lady of Mount Carmel, or sometimes St. Joseph's table. But that's what you're doing. You're just simply telling the children about your journey of faith. Number two, when you begin to teach, you say, first of all, I always say, give me my space. Well, what does that mean? You know, when you have to make something special about the place where you are going to gather in your home to teach religion. You might now be gathering in your home to help teach your children many other subjects. Quite often you gather at your home around the dinner table or in the family room, wherever. But it helps at this time to, to know that there's something different when you gather to talk about religion, to talk about your faith. So try to make something special about that space, something that you can add to it in a physical way that can say in a very real way, we're now going to talk about something different. This can be very simple, just by, by lighting a candle. Maybe you have the candle that your child received at baptism. Maybe it's bringing that out and lighting that candle. Maybe you want to set a Bible there. Quite often, children receive something special when they receive their first Holy Communion. Maybe you want to put out one of those statues or something. 
but something to kind of say, hey, this is a special place. This is where we will talk about religion now. And then number three, very simply, on your mark, get set, go. So it's very important to set a specific time to discuss religion, to say when we will talk about this. Quite often, if a special time is not planned throughout the week, this can get lost in the shuffle of daily life and daily happenings. Oh, I know how easily that can happen. Things just come up and next thing you know, it's the end of the week and you never got around to it. But if you set a time to do it, and then if you cannot make it at that time, it's easier to reschedule a time later in the week when you might be able to do it. So it's very important to specifically plan a time to do that. Number four, pray. Pray constantly. Prayer is an essential component of each part of the teaching process. First of all, you pray. You pray as parents as you plan. When you sit down and decide, what will I teach my children? You know, the planning can sometimes take a few minutes. Sometimes it can just be very quickly of, of just a time of sitting down and saying, okay, what will I talk about? Decide in your own mind what you'll do before you start teaching your, your children. Also, when you begin with prayer, it's more than just beginning with a prayer. Okay, let's pray. Now let's get on with what we're going to do. No, remind folks, prayer is that developing that relationship with God. Prayer is talking to God, but it's also listening to God. Prayer is that quiet time where we just sit, maybe for a few minutes, just listening to feel God's presence with us. Yes, it is important that children must learn the prayers of the church, the basic prayers prayers. Yes, they have to learn those. But it's more than that. It's connecting to that constant communication with God. God is on the journey with you. You are on the journey with God. And you talk to God constantly every day throughout that so that you can see God present in your life on the journey that you're doing. Number five, when I said plan, a little bit more that to decide what you're going to teach, to review that lesson. You might take five or 10 minutes to do it, maybe only two or three minutes. But bottom line, don't fret on thinking, my gosh, what am I going to teach? I have to teach everything. These kids have got to learn it all. No, faith is a lifelong journey. It's ongoing. You never stop learning more about your faith. You as a parent are constantly learning more about your faith. That's why when you go to church, you listen to the homily and you learn more about your faith then. Maybe you're reading or looking on websites or getting a daily email about that. Just know that you're constantly going to learn more about it. It's a mystery of faith. And we're going deeper and deeper and deeper into that mystery of faith, getting more clues about what it's all about. Children will learn things about that throughout their whole lifetime. I think it's better to teach one or two concepts, one or two ideas, and to teach those well so that children really understand that. It's better to do a few things and to do a few things well, I think, than to teach everything very quickly. Number six, remember that you don't do this alone. There's so many resources out there that you can look at the website right at your fingertip, also in the textbook that you might be using with your children. One site that I think is so good is the RCL Benziger site. You go to rclbenziger.com, and there's many resources there that go with your children's textbook. There's also resources for you as a parent. You can go to rclbenziger.com backslash Catholic hyphen resources. There's tons of things there that's constantly being changed every season of the year for Christmas, Lent, Easter, Advent. All these times there are new things that are constantly coming up, ways that can help you to teach and to discover new things to do. And number seven, lastly, to thine own self be true. Be comfortable with what you're doing. Know your faith. God is with you. The saints are with you. 
All those holy people that you know in your life, they are there. They are on your faith journey. It's not a one-time learning thing. Faith, faith is truly a tapestry. There's many different threads in that tapestry. And you are right now adding another new thread to that tapestry. Remind your child that you too are on the journey of faith. We're all learning faith together. And we're all becoming to see God present in our lives today. That's what it's what it's about, to see those wonderful God moments. How is God touching us in our lives? And that joy, that excitement, that I want to know more about it. So what, you be a teacher, can you do it? Of course you can. A little bit of work, but not that much. You're doing what you're called to do, to, to, to bring that light on how faith, how God is working in your life today. So go out and do it. My prayers are with you. Blessings be with you. Be at peace and make it a great day. Thanks a lot.